you. Well, is my mic working? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, good morning. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Haha, and it's basically a sound of laughter. I am from China. Uh, and uh, most importantly, the reason why I'm standing here is that I am an English learner at ISB. Is it working? Before I start the speech, uh, I want to ask a question to you. I want to invite you to look around this room and find out what is the race of the person you chose to sit next to and what is yours? Well, this is kind of an awkward start because uh, I know that most of you are si actually sitting with people you know. You are, sitting, you are probably sitting with um, people you know, like maybe you are from the same school. Uh, and uh, that is my guess. I, I don't actually see you actually from here. <laughs> um, but that works, right? Uh, and what's more interesting is that if you are sitting with some of your new friends you make here, um, I want to challenge you to actually ask them about what language they speak. I suppose that for most people here, your first language is English, but ask them about their second language. You will probably find out that it's very possible that you also share that as a similarity. So this is actually the start of a speech I did a few months ago, in which I shared about how race and language barriers can really affect the formation of friendship for any EAL students like me here. But recently, I came to the realization that the relationships between students and teachers are actually not that different because they are all built for EAL students like me again. They are all built on three very basic things. Cultural awareness, understanding upon language barriers, and acknowledging each other's uniqueness. So, in ISB, if, ask, uh, if you ask me who's the teacher that I feel the most approachable to, then I would probably say it's my Chinese teacher. Why, it's kind of understandable, right? Since we share not only the same culture background, the same language, but that she's actually a very kind person. Um, but thinking beyond that, there's actually another teacher coming to my mind, an English-speaking one. Why? I'm thinking about it. And the reason is that he's a very strange teacher. In his class, <laughs> no, 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 that's not the point. The point, is that, the point is that in his class, he incorporates a lot of different languages in his teaching style. For example, when he walks by me, he would Sometimes he would randomly throw a ni hao at my face. Uh, some of you are laughing because you know in Chinese that means hello. And sometimes when he walks by a Japanese, uh, a Japanese girl, he would say uh, hajime maste uh, or konnichiwa. Um, to be honest, his foreign languages are kind of poor and broken. <laughs> and his Chinese is very like out of context. But however, the point I'm trying to make here is as an EAL student, those greetings are powerful. Sometimes, um, being in, uh, my English is my second language, so learning here, learning abroad in another country, in another society, we are forced to use a language we are less familiar with. We are living in a culture that we are less familiar with. We are facing a content, a curriculum that we are less familiar with. So, when we enter your classroom, it's very possible that we also find that unfamiliar with. So as an educator, if you reach out to us and show your interest upon who we are and what our culture is like, we would really appreciate it. And that was the point when I determined that I should show the same level of interest of his course, of the content he was teaching, and I just got the first seven in his class. Thank you. Well, this doesn't work right. <laughs> um, let me go to the second page. So, that is the importance of cultural awareness. And building up from that, there's actually another important point. That is, that is understanding of how language barriers. Um, so, in the speech I did a few months ago, I actually shared a quote from Nelson Mandela, and I want to share with you today. The quote goes like this. If you talk to a person in the language he understands, that goes to his brain. 
However, if you talk to the same person in his own language, that will end up in his heart. Heart. Yes, um, that's absolutely true, I agree. But however, if you talk to me in English, and especially when you are using some uh, very hard words, uh, that will end up here. <laughs> <laughs> You are laughing. I guess that um, the reason behind that is partially because you have Yale students like me. But another reason probably is that it's not only my experience, but yours. Um, we are all language learners, right? You all have your second languages. When we are learning them, it's just happening every day that it's challenging at some stage. It's challenging for us to understand, uh, sometimes to even understand the meaning of the conversation, the meaning of the text. Not to mention those cultural contexts, dedicated slang, implicit subtext. And the point I want to share today is jokes. So preparing for this speech, I tried to think of an example in which uh, a teacher told me a joke uh, or was trying to show a sense of humor. But uh, since that joke is based on English, it's based on uh, the English-speaking culture, and I struggled uh, very hard to understand or realize that it was a joke and there were misunderstanding, but however, the fact is that I couldn't think of any. <laughs> I couldn't think of any. That was weird, right? Because, to be honest, that should, like, that should be happening every day. Why? I realized one thing that's kind of simple and obvious. That is, you can't remember a joke if when it was told, you didn't realize that it was a joke. Funny, but serious. <laughs> um, so the point I want to make here is that, actually, to be honest, I confess that in my memory, there were times that I thought, wow, this teacher is being rude. He was uh, saying things that's kind of mean to me. But thinking back, is it possible that that person was just telling jokes and being sarcastic, and I didn't realize? So teachers, I know how important sometimes in class jokes are. Um, using properly, they can brighten the classroom, they can drag the attention of your students back, from, back to the class from Instagram, right? Um, but, however, it's like, if I don't understand, if I don't even realize that it was a joke, then how do you expect me, how can you expect me to understand your intention and interpret you as a, stu uh, as a teacher in the right way? So this is the point I want to make now. I have, uh, I have talked about how important it is for teachers to show interest of our culture or to understand our language barriers. And now I'll come to the third point I make today. That is, how can we really solve those language barriers as educators when you are educating us? Um, so talking about language barriers, this is probably the image we have, a barrier there. But however, since I'm learning English, so I know it's plural, it's language barriers. So it actually looks like this. <laughs> um, the point I want to make here is that for Yale students, everyone, for every language learners per se, the barriers look different. The barriers look different. It can be a strange wire or it can be a fence, uh, something like that. But it's different for everyone. Talking about myself, coming to ISB, I, I, came, I came here from a, pub, a, a, pub, a Chinese public school, uh, so my English level was kind of too good for English B, but it was not enough for English A. And I chose to, go, uh, I chose to attend the English A class um, and become and became the student, kind of the in-between student. So uh, in the English A class, I was really challenged. <laughs> I challenged myself and I got that challenge. Um, I really struggled with understanding what the teacher was saying. She was like a machine gun. I struggled. <laughs> I struggled with uh, understanding the text, with understanding the pl even the plot of the books we are reading. Uh, I struggled with like how to present your idea out loud, like what I'm doing now. So, what do you think? I needed. What do you think is the thing I needed to improve? Chinese. <laughs> well, obviously not, <laughs> since I was learning English A, but um, nice try. <laughs> um, 
Okay, um, so I was in the EAP program, uh, which focused on helping EAP stu uh, helping EAL students like me. But however, that program was not really for me for the challenge I was facing, because that program is work studies oriented. That taught me how to do research, how to cite things in a proper way, but it doesn't tell me how to read the English literature or how to write an essay in a proper way. So what I need was actually this, 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 <laughs> this, okay? Um, <laughs> thank you for laughing. Um, what I need was actually this. I need one-on-one -on -one sessions. I need a teacher that I, th that I can trust, um, that who can really bridge me from where I was to where I want to be. So I started those one-on-one -on -one sessions regularly with, my, uh, with English teachers in the Learning Hub. Um, those sessions were not long. They were just five, uh, five minutes, 10 minutes meetings, per se, in which we talk about uh, so you, you can change this. Uh, if I were you, I can paraphrase this in this way. If I were you, I would say that, uh, I would say this as a conclusion. Uh, if I were you, I can deliver the speech like this. So uh, that teacher, I really appreciate her. Uh, she guided me through all the way here today. Um, so the point I want to make here is that every EAL student is different. Obviously, we are different humans, right? Uh, but we also have different personalities. We have different, way of, uh, different ways of learning. We have different needs sometimes. And a really important thing as educator is that you have to understand the needs. Well, if this student struggle with memorizing the speech, then probably what he needs would be a learning block to just memorize it. If that student is struggling with how to write an essay, then probably what he needs would be um, I don't know, a workshop or something. It just, I, I'm not good at education, but you are, right? So you have to come up with a solution here. <laughs> it's your work, not, not mine. I'm not getting paid for that. <laughs> well, um, so I have talked about as EAL students, we can be empowered by our educators when you show your interest, of our, uh, your interest upon our culture, when you show your understanding upon the language barriers. But this is the final point I want to make today. We would be really empowered and reach the top of our potential if you can come up with that solution when you see what is our specific needs. So this is a challenge for you, teachers, although this is just the first day of the meeting. But when you come back to your school, to your organization, I want to challenge you to know an EAL students really, really well, to know, uh, to know their hobbies, to know their personalities, to know the way of their learning, and most importantly, to know what they need, what is their learning needs. And this is really important for us. So for the end, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Haha. I am from China, but I, I am an English learner, obviously. But that is, not, that is not enough to define me. Apart from that, I'm also a theater tech, um, so I have the privilege that the mic, my mic is working. Um, <laughs> apart from that, I'm also Haha the singer. Sometimes I'm Haha the club leader. Sometimes I'm Haha the introvert person. Um, and that's me. As teachers, I really want you to know me in that way. I want you to know me as an individual over one side of myself. I want, me to, I want you to know me only as myself over one side of myself. My name is Haha. Thank you for listening today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.